What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Guys, I got a special request here. We got how Americans are tricked into buying fake food now. I knew the food was bad and it, some of it's fake, but we finna see and separate the real and the fake, I'm guessing. So uh, we finna check this out. Look like we already got the olive oil up here starting off. So y'all hit that subscribe button. Let's check this out. See the fake food we've been buying. Not the magnifying glass. You think this is olive oil, right? Wrong. Well, maybe some of it is, but this is actually a classic example of food fraud. The extra virgin food fraud. olive oils are being switched out with cheap ones. And fraud can sell something labeled as something else. Why is this fish being mislabeled? Your Parmesan cheese products do not contain any Parmesan cheese. What? No That's crazy. Then what is it? What the heck? One brand that stood out is completely safe. Well, so we can't eat anything. I guess At all. Anytime a product can be passed off as something more expensive, it will be. It's that simple. Counter that is crazy. Substitution and mislabeling. Food fraud. So does that mean even the stuff we call name brand is fake too? Not only harms the consumers' wallets, it puts their health and safety at risk. We might not oh. know the overall impact of food fraud because so much of what fraudsters do is hidden from us and has been for centuries. Some Crazy. estimates say food fraud affects at least 1% of the global food industry at a cost as high as $40 billion a year, Dang. according to the Food and Drug Administration. Grocery manufacturers of America estimated that 10% of the commercially available food in the United States is adulterated. That's a one in 10. It means if you're not on that eight item or less checkout line, you've got something in your cart when you leave the supermarket. Dang. That's probably bogus. That's crazy. Here's how and why crazy food sits secretly in our kitchen cabinets. All the good stuff According too. According to the FDA, food fraud is considered economically motivated adulteration, or EMA. It's a monetary impact to the consumer and to the food manufacturers, but it's also a potential public safety, public health impact. It robs us of nutrients yeah. and can kill people and has done. Dang, China did. That's crazy. It robs us of nutrients. China milk scan 53. Dang, and that's a lot of kids. That's a lot. Dead from ten. Wow. Larry Olmsted researched food fraud for years and published his book Real Food, Fake Food, in 2016. As I worked on this book, what can we do about it? Fake food became anytime what you buy is not what you think you're buying. Doesn't really matter whether it's legal or illegal. It's where you're you're being tricked. You're buying something that's not what you think it is. The worst offenders can include seafood, meat, dairy, honey, alcohol, spices. The now, I know the, happens more. I know them processed meats. Say, I know that's just a bunch of junk. But it, definitely, if I'm paying a high price for some poultry, I'm gonna need the real deal. Or with more expensive foods, totally makes sense, right? There's a higher margin. Take your extra virgin olive oil as an example. Fraud usually occurs here when a cheaper oil is added to the more expensive oil, and the label still wow. reads 100% extra virgin olive oil. That's food fraud. So you basically can still get the cheaper brand. I always felt like those cheaper brands were just like the leftovers of those major brand cereals because they all taste the same. Maybe we get a little, maybe they're a little staleer or something. I don't olive know. Olive oil has been adulterated for thousands of years. That's because crazy. Because it is of high value and it is sought out. They might flavor it with beta carotene and maybe color it with a little chlorophyll to make it a little more green. Wow. And so then you've got a, a, a lower quality, cheaper oil. So both of these olive oils I got at that the grocery look greener. store. And both of them are the store brand. But one cost way more than the other. This one had a label of 100% Mediterranean blend of extra virgin olive oil. So the olives were sourced from a bunch of different European countries and it said it was packed in Italy and there was no expiration mm. date. And when I purchased this one, no this one was a 100% California extra virgin olive oil. First pressed, cold pressed, unfiltered, no artificial colors, preservatives or flavors. And this one had an expiration date. It said that these olives were harvested in October, November, 2022, and that it would be good on your shelf until August, 2024. Mm. 
and it was much more expensive. Wow. <laughs> Roughly twice as much as this olive oil. And this one had way more information about where this olive oil came from. Now let's look at this. Where it came from, where it, when it expired and the other one did it. Come on now. It's crazy because I just heard somebody made a post because in my town, we have two Walmarts and one of the smaller Walmarts actually was still, they still had food that expired or you know, I don't know if it was expired or best used by. And it was since February. We in April. We in April. Like you got to check that stuff. That's one thing I, when I worked, I think I worked at, I didn't, I don't think when I worked at Big Lots, there was a time like you gotta, we had to go through all those shelves and stuff just because we had to take food that expired or close to expire off the shelf. Especially with people not buying, it's spice crazy. As it's a lot. another one that's vulnerable to fraud. Think of Check an expensive your food. spice like saffron. This tiny amount cost me $20 at the store. Dang. Saffron can be bulked up with some other material like plant stems and sold as the same, according to the FDA. Wow. Popular spices like basil and chili powder from a range of different brands. Anything that's kind of colored orange, brown, and ground up can be passed off as turmeric. It's the ultimate bait Dang. and switch. And then there's fish. Not the fish. The FDA says seafood fraud can occur when a less expensive species of fish is substituted for a more expensive what? species. Don't After even know all, what that is. It's kind of hard to know what fish you're buying, right? If you're an experienced chef or fishmonger, you can look at like a red snapper filet and tell whether it's red snapper. But 99% of consumers can't. You know, most mm -hmm. of the fish we eat is white fish. Every filet looks pretty much the same, which is On everything. so much substitution. The FDA is mandated by law to inspect 2% of the imported seafood, which is, I think, a very, very low bar. That is very In low. Fact, the U.S. That ain't nothing. as much as 85% of its fish. But federal fisheries enforcement is serious business. Agents from NOAA Dang. and U.S. Customs... Number one is some fish. ...a container filled with frozen fish from Thailand. They're looking for fraud. First, it's important to understand the matrix that food fraud lives in. There's intentional and unintentional types of food risk. Unintentional risks include food safety and quality, like accidental foodborne illnesses. CDC mm. estimates about 50 million people a year contract a foodborne illness. Only 20%, one in five of those, can be identified. Smashing so that burger. You know, 40 million people a year getting sick from something they ate that we don't know what it is. I feel like, and that's tough eating at restaurants too. I ain't going to lie. Because I've, I've had food poison before. It is, it's not nice. And... Work if work having experience working at a restaurant and still eating that ain't gonna lie. If you worked at a restaurant, I'm sure you probably be like, I wouldn't eat at a restaurant. Like it's it, that's how it is. Like me personally, I could go get something quick, but then again, it ain't. It's better to cook at home. It is better to cook at home. At this point, it seems like you need to grow. We gotta grow our own foods and do all that stuff. Good guess would be. That fraud that has crazy. To do with that. Then there's intentional. That's where food fraud is alongside food defense. Mm. The difference is fraud is motivated by economic gain and defense is motivated by harm. If you have a ton of coffee and you can turn that into 1.2 tons by adding some cheap filler to it, you wow, just yeah. increase your profits by 20%. And a lot of these products pass through a lot of hands. They go from small growers to big trucks to tankers to boats to processing plants. It's not necessarily like this big company that's selling you coffee that's ripping you off. It can happen in a lot of ways along the way. Dang. Even the FDA that is crazy. says it can't estimate how often this fraud happens or its economic impact. Over the last 10 years, the most common fraud committed is lying about an animal's origin and dilution or substitution. Both can't be lying about that. Percent of incidents recorded. Dilution and substitution are exactly what they sound like. Perhaps somewhere along the supply chain, the real expensive process of refining something like fresh olives is ignored. Wow. Maybe a little canola oil is added instead. Then there's the removal of value when an ingredient or part of a food is intentionally so it's not left even out. So it's not worth it to buy the expensive stuff when they're just still adding that cheap brand to it. 
Like that is Chicken wild. Or substitute That's wild. And that substitute can be a non-food substance. That's the 14% of the recorded food fraud incidents using non-food substances. The pandemic has given us a chance to focus on supply chains and, and forced us to. For example, during the pandemic, labeling fraud really spiked in 2021 mm. to 21% of the types wow, of fraud that is committed wild. and recorded. You know, if we knew all about it, why hasn't it been solved? The key was we weren't focusing on prevention. Money. Food fraud prevention, if we do it right, is boring. We're the fire marshal checking exits and uh, smoke alarms, not not catching the bad guys. So nothing will get passed. in place to ensure food safety. That's part of what the FDA does today. Basically, all food fraud, all product fraud is illegal under one law or another, somehow. Before the FDA existed, manufacturers could add basically whatever they wanted into the food. Think of Upton Sinclair's The so Jungle. What? That book was published in 1906. That same year, food safety regulation began with the Meat Inspection Act and the Pure what is Food that? Drugs Act, which outlawed adulterated and misbranded food items. To protect wow. consumers. This ultimately led to the creation of the FDA. The Food and Drug Administration and the Since then, laws have hit the books to further food safety protocols, like the Food Safety Modernization Act signed into law in 2011. And then horse meat hit. The fraud was on a grand scale. Horse meat was blended into beef in the UK, across Europe, and sold to horse meat. Oh no! Oh, I don't see. I don't know. See, we get away. I uh, see those frozen patties do be tasting different. Those frozen patties be tasting super, super different. Cause you know, you eat ground beef, you just think it all tastes the same. Angus beef, you think it tastes the same. All these these different brands, they all taste different. I don't care how much season you put on a burger and stuff. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna have a certain texture and stuff to it. Well, the scandal was <laughs> that was gross. a great wake up call. Some companies purposely mislead on labels. Prosecuting the fraudsters committing the crime can be tricky. After all, they're purposely trying to avoid that detection. But criminals are caught. Like in 2016, product labeled Great. Market oh. Pantry 100% Parmesan <laughs> oh, contains cheaper pan. Swiss and cheddar cheese and an organic filler called cellulose, which can be derived from wood pulp. Castle cheese was caught what in wood pulp and cheddar to its grated Parmesan that they sold as 100% Parmesan cheese. The FDA does not eat Parmesan like cellulose in cheese, but it can only make up 4% of the total ingredients. The president that of the company got a $5,000 fine. 200 hours of community service, 5, and three years of probation. For its part, the Food and Drug Administration says its job is to make sure that food doesn't hurt you, not to police the labels. Fraud is tough for the consumer in terms of food. Well, we, we spending all this money on the food. The food is getting more expensive and expensive. And y'all talking about it. That makes no sense. Like Y'all shouldn't be y'all talking about y'all just don't want to hurt the consumer, but it's hurting our pockets. It's hurting our pockets. And not to mention people that have food allergies. Like you saying this is, uh, I know a lot of people have like nut allergies. You telling me this oil or this stuff don't have nuts in it and you could possibly be putting nuts in this stuff. Like that that's the worst possible. If somebody have a food allergy, that would it's suck. It's difficult. They don't have a lab in their kitchen. The Food Fraud Prevention Think Tank has a five-question survey consumers can use when shopping for food. One, what type of product is it? Be aware of product that you put on you, in you, or plug in the wall. Two, oh. quality. Can you recognize the difference between the products? If you can't easily tell the difference, that makes you more vulnerable mm -hmm. to fraud. If I drink scotch, I couldn't tell if it's a difference between a $50 bottle and a $5,000 bottle. So I know I could be deceived at that point. Yep. Three, supplier. Do you know the retailer or the supplier? And do you trust them? So when you turn that box of cereal or bottle of juice over and read the back, there's a lot of information there that's required a whole by lot. Lot that's helpful to the consumer. And then question four, are you buying this item online? The supply chain can be shrouded in more mystery when shopping online. So how did you mm. find out about this website? Is it reputable? But it depends on how you find that supplier. And finally, five, complain. Okay, it's not a question. Yeah. <laughs> food fraud prevention think tank says if the retailer is legit, they will want to know. I think manufacturers can be the victims as well. 
The FDA also Dang. relies on consumers' reports. In recent decades, fraudsters have gotten more sophisticated in the techniques they use to fake the food products. And that means that wow. our detection methods and our test methods and standards have to be better at detecting fraud. That's why the U.S. Pharmacopoeial Convention provides a framework mm. for organizations to detect its vulnerabilities. We have food fraud mitigation guidance, so it is a supply chain risk management tool. And it's crazy too, because I feel like lately, at least here in the States, a lot of food's been getting recalled too. To a lot really of recalls been happening. look at which ones are the more risky products. Not even just food though. To be adulterated. Sometimes it feels like this is not that big of a deal. But the more fraudsters are able to achieve, the more we end up paying in the end as consumers. That's crazy. These cases rarely result in criminal penalties. If you want to be like a drug dealer and import heroin and you get arrested on you know, a large scale, you're going to go to jail. Yeah. But if you can make $80 million importing adulterated honey and then you're going to get a slap on the wrist and some fines, why wouldn't you do food instead of drugs? That's, that's crazy. That's criminal downside. He got a point. So as long as we don't take it seriously why should the perpetrators take it seriously what we want is the food industry just made a to point. be focused on making food and not have to worry about looking over our shoulder checking different suppliers and that's going to impact more food being produced better food safer food less expensive food there's plenty of things for us to worry about in the world today and food fraud should not be one of those at all what are they trying to take us out they're trying to take us out that's what they do but now nah, yeah that that was suck that sucks for people that have food allergies man um that that's not right at all that's not right you know if i'm paying all this money for this i want the original thing i'm not trying to get a counterfeit or you just put a little bit of this like i said leaving stuff leaving stuff out is dangerous that's very dangerous and they get a slap on the wrist don't do that again but a lot of stuff have been getting recalled i can't even say just food i think fabuloso got a recall on it you know that's a cleaning supply so everything's been there's been a lot of recalls happening here lately on some at least some items i know i purchased before so that sucks but y'all let me know your thoughts what y'all think about this issue because that sucks that sucks for people that have those allergies those food allergies man like it said it don't have it but could very well have it or a little bit of you know all it takes is just a little bit to bend somebody up but that's all i have y'all hit that subscribe button and y'all be blessed be the best and be you i'm out